Jarrett. And I'm Zach. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript updates you on the NHS musical, looks into the reception of the Integrated Math Program at Northampton High, and investigates drug use in popular culture. In recent weeks, Hollywood political and media circles have continued to be rocked by allegations of sexual harassment and assault. On Wednesday, Today Show host Matt Lauer was fired and Garrison Keillor, best known for his work on the NPR-affiliated show Prairie Home Companion, was dropped from Minnesota Public Radio. Charlie Rose was fired from CBS and prominent political reporter Glenn Thrush was suspended from the New York Times. Additionally, Senators Al Franken and John Conyers have been accused. On Tuesday, President Uhuru Kenyatta of Kenya was sworn into his second term after a violent and divisive election season. The drawn-out election process included two disputed polls, one which was boycotted by the opposing candidate and one which was struck down by Kenya's Supreme Court. At least two people were killed in violent clashes between police and supporters of President Kenyatta's opponent. Over 70 people have been killed this election season in Kenya. Kenyatta's opponent, Mr. Odinga, has declared that he will have an assembly on December 12th in which his supporters will swear him in as president. On Tuesday afternoon, North Korea tested an intercontinental ballistic missile that experts say could reach the eastern seaboard of the United States. Analysts believe that North Korea has made a jump in missile capability in the past two and a half months. At an emergency UN Security Council meeting, U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley warned that North Korea would be utterly destroyed if war occurs. Haley also stated that the U.S. has requested that China cut off North Korea's oil supply. Howdy. I'm Mikey Diaz. Last month, I reported that the Northampton High School musical had been postponed. As of two weeks ago, the musical has officially been canceled. After the initial postponement of auditions, the Northampton High School Musical Committee and the Theater Department's Booster Club, Friends of NHS Theater, have decided it is in the department's best interest to cancel the musical entirely this year. The decision to cancel the musical was a heavy-hearted resolve after financial and scheduling troubles. The musical is an expensive undertaking already, and with a lack of funds coming in through the school in an attempt to reduce liability of bringing in outside artists, affording to put on such a show has become extremely difficult. In addition, student interest has been at an all-time low. Normally, groups of upwards to 40-plus students have participated. In the past couple years, however, they've struggled to get a full cast. Showing a successful show financially has become nearly impossible to achieve. Acquiring the rights alone can cost upwards to thousands of dollars. So, for the first time since the 1990s, Northampton High School will not present a musical. The canceling of the musical will have a big impact on the students who intended to participate. But what about the rest of the school community? I went to the halls to pull people's opinions on the matter. I kind of think that's outrageous. I, like freshman year, sophomore year, there's musicals and it's kind of like, it's a school experience. I'm very disappointed. I always really look forward to the musical every year. I love going. Um, I think it's the best play we usually put on, so I'm very extremely sad that we cancel it this year. I never saw it anyways, so, but that's kind of a bummer. However, students wishing to participate are not out of luck. Musical director Marie Brown has agreed to direct a piece for a traveling theater competition in the spring. But don't worry, NHS Theater plans to do everything it can to fundraise to ensure the annual musical will return for next year. Stay tuned for more. I'm Mikey Diaz. And thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Blair Castillo, and this is Tell It Like It Is. This week, we are discussing the integrated math program, its outcomes and reactions among administration, teachers, and students since it was introduced four years ago in our Hampton High School. I sat down with Nancy Chivers to discuss how administration decided to integrate the integrated math program instead of the former regular math program. One of the most important goals was to increase the numbers of students taking advanced mathematics, um, and we mean all students. So the adoption of Core Plus and uh, this more integrated mathematics program had that as its most specific goal. The past math program would give students um, the opportunity to learn algebra by and of itself. Students would study geometry by and of itself, but never would the two meet. Some teachers had to alter their teaching methods to accommodate the new program, which is supposed to provide students with a more broad experience integrating algebra, geometry, statistics, and analysis in one program. 
I sat down with Randy Gordon, math teacher, to discuss positive and negative outcomes he has had so far and how the integrated math program is different from the past program. As far as positive outcomes, what I'd say is, is that the integrated math program really is, um, it's focused on in problem solving and understanding. So for a long time we've been trying to f solve problems like through this is the answer to the problem. And the integrated program really talks about why. As far as negative outcomes, every student has a different style. There are some students that work better with the uh, more traditional approach of algebra, geometry, algebra 2, and some that do better with the integrated uh, course. There is a lot more reading, and so someone who struggles with reading will have to, uh, will find it more challenging. Um, what we have to do as teachers and as a, a school and a community is, is to make sure that we support all students. But how has the change affected students? I asked the students around NHS what their experience has been with this new IM program. Um, I do not like the integrated math program. I think that it's a lot broader than like just like math and kind of specific things in math. Um, it's been pretty good, honestly. Like it's um, kind of uh, more helpful. Like I, in my opinion, I it helps me more um, better because they explain it more and uh, they give me a better idea of what I need to learn. Um, I haven't had a great experience with the integrated math program. Uh, it's a lot different than the math I'm used to um, in middle school. Despite the diverse range of opinions about the program, it is here to stay for the foreseeable future. This was Tell It Like It Is, I'm Flor Castillo. Hi, I'm Odette Venice and welcome back to Hit It or Miss It, where all things pop culture are covered. On the 15th of November, rising American rapper Little Peep tragically died of an overdose on Xanax pressed with fentanyl powder. His death has opened up a conversation about drug use and how it's represented in pop culture. Based on the statistics of the Rehab International Organization, teen drug abuse has been a rising problem in the U.S. for the last decade now. On average, teens listen to 12 plus hours a week of music, and depending on the genre of music, you'll hear about 584 substance slash drug abuse references a week. This week, I sat with Ananda Lennox, the director of the Northampton Prevention Coalition, who speaks with us on the statistics of youth drug use and how they try to combat these drug issues. The opioid epidemic um, is really scary. It's taken a lot of lives. It's been in the Northampton area for over 20 years. It's just that it's getting more attention now. And so what I think pop culture does is it normalizes a certain extent of drug and alcohol and tobacco use. Um, they, what they show over and over again that's not really healthy is actors or people that you really look up to using these substances to make themselves happier or more popular. And so it's easy, I think, as a young adult to see this exhibited over and over again and see it as like maybe something that would work for them as well. To try to answer your question, I think it's something that everybody in this age group should be well aware of. I think we need to destigmatize addiction, but yet still raise awareness about how dangerous the drug is so that it's taking, it's seen in the light that it needs to be seen in. While youth drug use is a rising problem in Northampton and nationwide, how might pop culture especially impact this? I talked with Sue Crego, English teacher at NHS, who does a unit on pop culture and drug issues to find out. I think somebody famous who dies from a drug overdose makes it real that this is what can happen to you. Um, and if, it, if somebody that rich and famous could end up like that, maybe it could happen to you too. So I think depending on who's watching this person or who's admiring the person or whatever and what their state of mind is, I, but I do think one way or the other, people get, especially teens, get influenced by the people that they admire and what they do and what happens to them. The opioid epidemic continues to grow and kill 100,000 Americans a year. Think about what you can do to stop this and help this country of its drug problem. I'm Oda Benes, and this was Hit It or Miss It. Thanks for watching. Jared and I are videographers on the transcript, and we spend our time filming and editing content to bring you this broadcast on Friday mornings. We are looking for new reporters and videographers to join our team. If you're interested, pick up an application outside room G16 or come to our open house after school on Tuesday, December 5th. We hope to see you there. And check out this week's online extras. All right, so number one, do you think that you could beat us in a fight? In a heartbeat. 
<laughs> On November 15th, a company, OnePlus, released a new phone called 5T. Let's take a look.